Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be installing Debian 11 in a virtual machine on VirtualBox using Windows. First we'll want to go to the Debian.org website and we'll see a downloads page somewhere on the screen, find it and then hit download. We're looking for a specific image here and by default it is Debian 11, AMD 64, the 64-bit version which is what we want, the net installer. If it doesn't launch you can click on the button and it will launch for you. Save it somewhere and if you don't already, you'll go to the virtualbox.org website and download VirtualBox 6.1 is the latest release here. We click the huge download button and you'll want the one for Windows hosts. You'll go through that install procedure. It's very easy, no big deal. And then we'll move on to setting up a virtual machine for Debian 11 inside of VirtualBox. All right, you're probably at this point already, but go search for VirtualBox and launch it as an application. What VirtualBox is, is a virtualization software that allows you to run virtual machines on your host computer. Here mine's Windows 11 today, but we'll be installing Debian 11, and I already have a version of Debian 11 here. What I'll do is I'll remove that and we'll create our brand new Debian 11 virtual machine. We'll start by going to the tools section, hitting new, and typing in a name, I'll call it Debian 11. You can call it whatever you want. The type is going to be Linux and the version gets filled in for us already since we typed in Debian. It correlated that it wants the Debian version. 64-bit is correct, I'll hit next. After that, we'll want to set some sort of memory here between your min and max. You'll want more than two gigs, but uh, keep it under the red, that way you don't starve your own system memory. And I'll just do somewhere around 8192, which is eight gigs of memory for this version. Of course, do whatever is enough for you and not starving the system, then hit next. We'll want to create a virtual hard disk now and hit create. We have three different versions, a VDI, VHD, and a VMDK. Today I'll be going with VDI, which is the native virtual box disk image. VHD and VMDK can help you if you want to go between different virtualization softwares, but VDI is fine for today. I'll hit next. Following that, we have dynamically allocated or fixed size space for our physical hard disk. We'll want the dynamically allocated that gives us a little bit of wiggle room, meaning the storage on the host operating system will only get allocated as the virtual machine grows. A fixed size will automatically allocate all the storage space and we'll lose out on potential resources if we go with fixed size. I'll hit next. Now we're being asked how much storage space do we want to allocate for this machine? Since we chose dynamically allocated, it won't take up everything here. So I'm going to give it somewhere in the ballpark of 64 gigs. I strongly suggest to go over 32 gigs with Debian 11, or you might get a failed install. I've had trouble in the past. After you have your amount set, again, don't starve your own system of storage. Be reasonable here. I have over a terabyte left, so I can use 64 gigs comfortably and hit create. All right, now we have a virtual machine created here, but we need to go through the settings real quick. You can either click over here in settings, hit control S, or right click and hit settings. Just make sure whatever virtual machine you're dealing with is selected since we're dealing with Debian 11, that's what I have selected. All right, in here, I'll go to the system tab where I'll enable EFI. It says special OS is only. Well, most operating systems nowadays have EFI based BIOS. So we wanna select this so we can emulate it on newer hardware. As far as the processor goes, you can give more CPUs if necessary. This doesn't work too well sometimes, so I just like to keep it one. At the beginning, you can change these things down the road. We'll go down to storage, and in here we'll see a controller called IDE. It's currently empty. What we wanna do is go to the right-hand side, select a little disk, and then select the image that we want to run. We'll do this by hitting choose a disk file, going to wherever we downloaded Debian, the net installer image to, and I see that it's right here, Debian 11, AMD 64, the net install. I'll select that and hit open. Following that, I'll go to audio. I'm gonna disable the audio. I don't wanna hear things. You can keep yours enabled. In the network, I'll make sure I have NAT selected and hit OK. All right, we're just about to start up the virtual machine for the first time. But before we do, smash that like button for me. And now we'll select 
our newly created virtual machine and hit start. You may or may not get a message here where it says select a startup disk. Even though you already put in a startup disk, you'll have to hit the drop down arrow and select the proper disk. I want Debian 11 AMD net install to start and I'll hit start. Give it a few moments here while it starts things up and we're being shown this grub menu. That allows us to select between graphical install, install advanced options and a few more things. We want the graphical install today. We'll press enter. Give it a few moments to load up and here we're welcomed by which language we want to run the installer with english is what i'm going to use use whatever you're comfortable using and hit continue select your location i'm in the united states select whatever location you're in and hit continue following that the key map so this is what your keyboard is currently configured mine's american english and that's what i'll select and then hit continue give it a few moments while it loads and retrieves a few packages here and then we'll be asked some more questions all right the first thing we're asked here is to configure the network. So what is your host name? I'm gonna type in Savvy Nick for me. Type in whatever you want. All the rest of the computers on the system will see this name. So select whatever you think strategically is necessary and then hit continue. A domain name name. We don't need one of these. If you want to set up a home network with domain name names, you can here, but we'll hit continue. Now we can set up our users and our passwords. Uh, here it's asking us for a root password. Now, if you go through this section, you'll actually get two separate users, a root user and a normal user. If you don't go through this, your normal user will have super privileges, can become this root user, but I'll put in a password for my root user and separate my normal user here. I have videos on how to get the normal user as, as part of super user access as well. I'll make sure to post a link in the description below. I'll hit continue. And now we're asked for a full name for a new user. This is the normal user. Call it whatever you want. I'm calling mine Savvy Nick and hitting continue. A username for your account. I'm keeping it Savvy Nick and hitting continue. Now we'll put a password in for that user. So make sure to put it in and confirm that password and again hit continue configure the clock here is where we select our time zone eastern is fine for me select whatever is right for you and give it a few moments while it picks up on a few things about your disk partitioning the disks we have different methods of partitioning i'll go with the standard which is the guided use entire disk method hit continue and now we're shown the storage disk that we had allocated for our virtual box it says vbox hard disk i have around 70 gigs available to me you're going to have whatever you had selected before for your virtual hard disk you'll select that it's really the only option here and then hit continue there are different partitioning schemes i'll select the all files in one partition recommended for new users since we are a new user here with this virtual machine hitting continue we'll be asked to review our changes here what's going to happen is we're going to have free space we're going to have an efi partition with 536 megabytes created about 70 gigs of ext4 and some swap here then there's going to be some free space at the end so at the beginning and end free space Anyways, this looks correct to me. I'm going to hit finish partitioning and write changes disk and hit continue. Now we're being warned one last time before we write changes to our virtual disk to check over things and we're confident here. So write changes to disk. Yes, continue. As long as you're doing this in a virtual machine, you shouldn't be having a problem. Now the installer is installing the base system and a few utilities and tools that it needs in order to run properly. So we'll give it a few minutes here while it finishes the installation of the base system all right after the base system is set up we can scan for more installation media i'm going to hit no i don't have anything else i want to scan here for my virtual machine hit continue and now select a mirror country meaning what is the closest country you have so they can select the proper mirror it'll make things faster so make sure to select your proper country that's closest to you and available as a mirror hit continue now it gets down into actual mirrors and deb debian.org is fine for me select whatever one you think is closest to you in the country of choice i don't have an http proxy i'm going to just hit continue on this one and now we're configuring the package manager and installing selected software this is gonna again take a few moments do we want to participate in the package usage survey no i don't i'm just gonna hit continue on this one and now is a very important 
important step where we get to select which desktop environment we want to use with this installation. I'm going with the defaulted GNOME here, which is already pre-selected as a Debian desktop environment. I'm gonna go with the standard system tools. Everything and anything else can be installed post-install if necessary, but we want some desktop environment. GNOME is fine for me. If you do wanna select a different one, just deselect GNOME and select a different one and then hit continue. Now is where the installation of software starts to take place. This will take a few minutes while all the packages are retrieved from the proper mirror and that downloaded software is installed in the virtual machine. Take a moment to take a break because this can take anywhere between five to 30 minutes. It all depends on your mirrors and how fast your internet access is since this is a net installer. We're getting close to finishing up and I'll catch you as soon as things are finished installing here. All right, and after all your extra packages are installed, we have our our Debian 11 installation complete. It is telling us right now we're ready to reboot and boot into the new system. We'll hit continue, let it finish up the install, let it reboot, and hopefully log us in. All right, I'm gonna select Debian GNU Linux. From the selection in the GNU Grub menu, hit enter. We're getting real close here to finishing things up. And here we are, I'm welcomed by the login screen. I'll put my password in, hit enter for my normal user. And look at this, I'm welcomed by the Debian 11 GNOME desktop environment where I can go to activities, launch some of the basic default applications that I get with this Linux distribution, including Firefox, Evolution of Mail Client, Rhythmbox, LibreOffice, a word processor, files for file management, Manager, software for a software store and of course help if you need it. There's more applications if you click on show applications and on the right hand side we have access to stuff like internet, volume, settings, logging out and powering down the computer. Right in the middle here with GNOME we have a calendar as well as if we have any events currently or notifications on the left hand side. We can right click and change the background, display settings and settings. The first thing I'll suggest is if you go into display settings, select a resolution that works for you. If you can't find one, a very important thing is to install the guest edition CD. You'll hit devices and insert the guest editions CD image. I won't be going into depth about this, but I do have a different video specifically for Debian 11. So you can install the guest edition CD where you get things like proper resolution settings if you don't already have them and get to use tools between your host and your virtual machine like drag and drop sharing or or copy and pasting between your Windows computer and the virtual machine. It's a great tool to use and helps update some of your drivers for the Linux kernel. That way you can use your virtual machine more seamlessly with your hardware. Well, that's really about it. Uh, you've now successfully installed Debian 11 inside of VirtualBox using a virtual machine, all inside of Windows 10 or 11, whatever you're using. I'm gonna power things down and we have Debian 11 here, ready to start and launch at any given moment. We can test Debian 11 out and become a super user through the practice of using Linux. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.